in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I beg your pardon for my sins and the grace to spend this time of prayer fruitfully. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. We are here for our monthly recollection, first Sunday of April, still in the Lenten season, the fifth uh, Sunday. If I remember right, we have uh, started last month. Also, the first Sunday, just days before, was uh, the start, as Wednesday. And uh, it has been five weeks that uh, we have heard, meditated on uh, the Lenten uh, message or what we need to do, what our Lord had uh, told us. And uh, so we have intensified our prayer, our uh, mortification, making sacrifices, fasting and abstinence, and uh, naturally, uh, the uh, love of uh, our neighbors, works of mercy, almsgiving. So, well, it has been uh, five weeks and surely we are closing in. And in a week's time, we enter the most solemn uh, uh, of uh, our Lord himself, telling the uh, apostles, I will uh, go to Jerusalem and they will... Uh, persecute me and uh, they will uh, well as we ha we will uh, meditate the passion of our Lord on uh, Good Friday and uh, three days after as he promised which will be the topic of our uh, first meditation of today well, three days later, after Good Friday, after the Passion and Death, everybody waiting. We are also waiting after 2,000 years. And uh, the disciples, as we knew, they got frightened, so they disappeared. You know? They were not at the foot of the cross except John. Well, we should learn our lesson by now. We will not run away. Lord, uh, we have told you we will follow you to the end, to the cross. Why? Because we also have read, we also have meditated time and again that you said you will rise on the third day. And that uh, happen and the apostles uh, already saw you and uh, they were all amazed we also know that and it's just that now uh, the Lenten season is calling us to come closer to you as close as possible so that we will expect we will join you no, we will rejoice no, hallelujah. No, because Christ has risen. And that's what we want to be uh, thinking about. The, the victory, no, the resurrection, the day of uh, expectation. As uh, uh, only three days they waited and said, well, will really our Lord rise? And so on with apprehension, with uh, that hope, and truly, yes, he did. And he even asked them, huh, look, uh, touch my hand, Thomas, the doubting Thomas, and all the rest. And our Lord continued being with them for 40 days. So as we uh, are still in the fifth uh, Sunday, but we are already thinking of 
the resurrection what happened if uh, no we uh, we waited and we arrived to that day we expected to happen it happened already and so the victory is there we already know but uh, the victory has not been won by me by you by all of us who are still here we have to still make effort that's why every year the call of the lenten season uh, for uh, almost 50 days expecting that we want to join that uh, victory of our lord that he has risen just like any no, just like anything that we have now, no, we are expecting, uh, for example, uh, that you studied uh, medicine and almost at the last uh, years and therefore you will be taking the board exam and more intense preparation, the reviewer for uh, uh, some months just before intense every day even attending those classes uh, and uh, because expecting that they will take the exam and they want to pass the board exam whether it be for doctors for the bar exam that uh, after eight years of studies they expect to be doctors to be lawyers to be engineers uh, to be teachers, no. uh, there are also exams for, for all this uh, professional license. But they have to put the effort, they have to put the time, they have to struggle, whatever it costs. If we transfer this to uh, the victory, the resurrection of our Lord, does it also call for you? And all of us to spend the time preparing and all preparing and uh, we won't want uh, we don't want to make a mistake telling the Lord will prepare when it's there uh, the Lord when I'm already retired when yeah I'm senior and nothing more to do and therefore I will help out in the in the parish no, I will even uh, go uh, every day. No, only towards the last part, where in just like in any board exam, the uh, dates are announced. They will tell you no, uh, November uh, second week, the three days, and so you we have a target. And uh, before that, well, either you you already we already study and prepare, or we prepare only the last week, or if we want to make sure, well, that prep. But in this case, since uh, it's uh, not only a board exam where we can take one, and if it so happen the results uh, will be way we people are waiting so how uh, i have taken the exam lord uh, we i have prayed very very much and it will still come next month or now very fast because it's all digital maybe in two weeks it will be uh, posted and we will have to look uh, my names and so true enough you look at your names and then whoop, my name appeared and so in facebook uh, it's already announced so and so you no know, the parents or uh, the mother very proud say, well my daughter my son already had passed the board exam he's already a doctor or an architect proud of having passed and if looking at it and say lord May I pass? And then you keep on scrolling, scrolling, and uh, you don't see your name. What happened there? And then you repeat. Look again. At the, maybe I miss it. So, really none. And therefore, out of the 5,000 uh, students who took the exam, only 50% passed. 2,000 plus. And the rest? The names did not appear. Sorry. Well, 
they will have to take a second one next year. Prepare again. Take two and take three. And some I heard that they take four and still would not pass and uh, never forget it. So, you know, meaning you can repeat and try again. Well, Lord, can you give us a second try? A third one? As far as we know, there is none. We are given a chance to live here on earth. And besides, there is no announcement. When will be the judgment? When will be the test and exam? None. And so, when do you prepare? Towards the end, all the time, while well, we are busy preparing for our professional work, and later on, uh, we are already with family, with children, so very busy working, and, uh, and then going abroad maybe for uh, further studies, or still uh, wanting to, to go up. Uh, in, 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 in the position. And so everything for the career or for the family have we neglected that at the same time we should be preparing for that eventuality that our Lord may call us at any time. And He said so already, Lord, You said to us loud and clear, be watchful, be alert, for You do not know the day nor the time of our being called, of taking the exam. I know that all of us uh, knew it, no? and we ask ourselves, if this is a very, very important exam, and it's a judgment, final judgment from the Lord, no? from our Creator, from our Savior, He is the only judge that will tell us whether we pass or we fail. Wouldn't we, you and I, take this exam, which is this particular uh, examination, particular judgment, for me, for you, it's individually, we will prepare it all the time. That could be our resolution. It has to be because I, I cannot afford to lose. Please, Lord, help me. That's why we keep on asking and praying even during this Lenten season or later on in the Easter season. Then after uh, 50 days of the Easter season, we go back to the ordinary time. We keep on praying. We keep on having relations with the Lord through our prayers, of course, also through our work. Why? For this victory that we want, not a goal, not a silver medal or a trophy, you know, everybody's playing, everybody uh, with the basketball, with the football, you know, with the Olympics, preparing for Almost four years, every four years, Olympic. And so he is uh, those athletes that we saw you know, in China. They all want to win the gold, the silver, even just a third placer, just for the name. Because as far as uh, the gold is concerned, I don't know how, how, what is the value of that the gold medal or gold trophy. Is that it? Maybe the honor, of course, for, for him, for the player, and for the country that you represent. But that's all. And not everybody would win this, this uh, medal or the prize. Only one, and the second one, and the third one. But in this day of resurrection, our Lord on Good Friday was there crucified and asking the Lord the last seven last words. He, one of them was saying, Lord, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. He was asking for forgiveness to, 
to everybody, not just exceptionally for some and for the others, very bad or no, they, they are uh, complete sinners, don't forgive them. No, he does not, our Lord does not ignore anybody. He wants you, you, everybody to be saved, to win the battle, to struggle, to make effort, uh, to really prepare every day. Not only the beginning or at the end, but throughout our short life, very short. How short? Well, some as early as uh, when they are teens. No, as the others when they are still in the womb, when they get aborted. And the others can go further, uh, arrive to the senior, and then more senior. But at 80, at 90, time is up. Our Lord has the schedule already for each one of us. And when we pass away, when we uh, stop breathing and close our eyes, our Lord say, come in. He will right away, he knows what we have done. Or he will stop you and say, the door is closed. Why? You did not follow instruction. You did not follow my teaching and my commandments. You offended, you committed sins, and you did not repent. And I have given you all the, the assistance, all the help, but you did not take advantage of them and therefore this is your situation you're corrupt you're a rubber you are uh, you know what, whatever uh, sins one has committed during his lifetime and really our lord would not be very happy but he cannot do very much because he had given you all of us freedom. You choose to the right, to the left. You want to go to heaven, to, uh, to, to hell, and which he mentioned, eternal damnation in hell, the eternal fire. Or come with me to paradise. We'll uh, be enjoying you know, life forever, everlasting life in heaven with all the saints. That is what he has told us. And are we obedient? Are we listening? Are we uh, 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 making effort? And because the victory we want to have one day. For me, I don't know, for you, different dates. Each one, they have their own hoping to get to heaven. And that we don't need to compete. No need. Unlike Olympic, I compete with you. I have to be better than you. No, here we, 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 we help one another. We want all to join and to be able to get in and even lining up, not fighting, pushing you, you know, so that you go forward and then next and then the next and all of you without anybody lagging behind. That's why we ask us to love one another, including our enemies. Because he doesn't want uh, to exclude anybody. He wants all to be there. Right. And he has resurrected. And that's our hope. If Jesus had resurrected, we will all resurrect because he said so. And even the, our faith is based on that. If he said so and he failed and he said, three days, we are waiting. This is the fourth day the fifth day, and still none, still dead, just like many other founders who are also preaching and telling people and many followers, but when he died, well, his body uh, get, uh, got corrupted because he's not God, of course. He may promise so many things, but when he's gone, no more. But our Lord is here. He said, and therefore, the hope that someday will join you, someday, soon. Don't say someday, how, when, still far. No, I'm still young. No, 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 no. Even if we are young or not so young, no, it will be soon because 100 years old compared to eternity, 1,000, 2,000, 
the number of the sun, the chain, the sun, you see, it is even compared to the, to the sun on the shore. So many, you, can you count that? As many as that. And therefore, it's how, how important that is for us to be making sure. And he promised happiness, not temporal, which we also, well, thanking the Lord, he has given us hundredfold here on earth. No, when, uh, you know, when we help one another, when we love God, and then what we ask, he, we obtain and we enjoy uh, even uh, with the family and even eating and going places, nothing wrong with that. And we enjoy, but that's temporal. We, we uh, take vacation a weekend or even a month uh, in another country if we can afford, but we have to come back and then all gone. Maybe memories of last year, of five years ago, we have gone to U.S. or Europe, but they are gone. But, and very happy memories. But then our Lord is promising different kind of joy and different kind of happiness. What is that, Lord? Eternal happiness. No end anymore, no more problems, no more pandemic, ah, no more dying, no more so that, well, I am stomach hungry. All of this that we experience suffering and sickness and uh, difficulties uh, and hard work no, that we have endured during this life, no more, gone. That is the joy that we are still hoping to arrive. We are still here. The saints, yes, Saint Jose Maria, they are there already. They have won the fight. They persevere. And so we, that's why we ask them to intercede for us so that we also join them one day. Okay? Well, Lord, we want to really uh, pray for that intention that uh, uh, we are already uh, thinking of the day of the resurrection in uh, two weeks' time, and yet we still have to pass these two weeks, the fifth and then the sixth, Palm Sunday, and then the uh, Holy Week following very well. Even the services, if it's our parishes are open for the services, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, you know, and uh, Holy Saturday, and with all the expectation, Easter Sunday, Day of Recollection, uh, Day of Resurrection. Resurrection. So we ask the Lord to help us persevere. No, because we already know. But how we can continue moving towards that aim? No, and uh, without giving up the struggle. Uh, easily, when it's hard, when we don't see it yet coming, no, we lose that hope, we lose our faith even. No, forgetting that our Lord said so and everything that He said and what He did. No, all the miracles that he performed during those three years, it, it's, they were all true. It happened. The powerful God. But the, the best really proof that uh, we should never forget is that he said, I will resurrect. And therefore, all of us will resurrect someday. Well, we ask you, Lord, to uh, help us in this uh, struggle, Lenten season, to arrive to the resurrection, or in this life, if we are given uh, some more years, uh, year after year, there will be reminders because it will go to the uh, annual, annual, uh, annually, you know, the, 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 the Advent and then the Christmas, Ordinary time coming in the Lenten season and then the Easter season, ordinary time again for 34 weeks. So you see, it's uh, just going around without much changing. 
no while we are busy with our everyday activities no and especially if we include that while we are uh, uh, exercising our daily activities we remember our saint Jose Maria take advantage of your everyday life it's not useless it's not say, well i'll just look i will not do anything but keep on praying keep on you know because that's the victory i want and what will you do here nothing more no i'm not interested in in my my work in my families no they are there and but i won't give much attention because my attention is that no that is not uh, supposed to be because our lord said well you have been created man has been created to work are you working should be you cannot just just uh, passing the time or just waiting <laughs> it's coming it's coming and we, no we have to be very busy working preparing precisely you know, your profession and then once you have achieved uh, you you are now a, a full-fledged uh, professional and you're working in uh, companies and you have families and then uh, the family is growing all the children grown up uh, we have reached to the to, to to the senior years but all these years through the teaching of Saint Asa Maria we have try to sanctify we have tried to make it holy in the eyes of god because that what he asks jose maria to tell everybody no why you are busy uh, tell them and explain to them and show them the example how to sanctify how to make holy that work whatever work whatever position because if you do that with all the virtues needed to make it something uh, to be offered to God, then you make yourself holy in the eyes of God, in your place of work. Of course, from time to time, we have to go to the parish, to the church, you know, to attend Mass, uh, for the liturgical services, but that's only for uh, an hour or so. All the rest will be at work, at home, Huh? with friends and he says okay all of that sanctify including sanctifying others so those are the three points that uh, we can uh, really practice all the time to arrive uh, to resurrection to arrive to our eternal destiny in heaven we ask our mother mary to uh, accompany us all all that all the time now while we are here on earth which she will do will she will do very well for us which she did also for jesus and for joseph the mother at home in nazareth for many years and now she has been given to us uh, behold your mother and so take have devotion to mama mary and thus even if we try to to stay behind or we got frightened or we don't want to move forward a mother will accompany us will accompany us uh, her children and then we could keep on moving until the end i thank you my god for the good resolutions affections inspirations that you have communicated to me in this meditation I beg your help in performing them. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. Act of presence of God. Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. Do I face each day's challenges without losing my peace? What am I doing to create an atmosphere of serenity around me, with my spouse, 
my children, my colleagues, and so on. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. What is my attitude when I contemplate the challenges society presents? Is Jesus the constant reference point in my commitment to transform the world? A good sportsman doesn't fight to gain just one victory, and that at the first attempt, he keeps trying again and again. And if he doesn't succeed at the first attempt, he keeps on trying with determination until the obstacle is overcome. Do I go to the sacraments to increase my desire to continue walking with the Lord with the assurance that He is helping me every day, time and time again? Christ's resurrection introduces us into a new life. What can I do so that this new life brings joy and optimism to my family when difficulties arise?
hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Are there projects in my family, professional, and social life that can I entrust more to the Holy Spirit so that He can bring them to fruition? While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. Do I share my life with Christ as I walk? Do I ask the Holy Spirit to help me make my practices of piety an encounter with the living Jesus? He went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognized him. Do I manage not to lose my amazement at the gift of the Eucharist? Do I try to share this great gift with my family? Act of Contrition Holy Mary, our hope, seat of wisdom, handmaid of the Lord, pray for us. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Saint Gabriel, Saint Paul. Our topic of this talk this morning is about cheerfulness. And uh, there are several subtopics subtopics which we will take up under it. The first one is meeting sadness and reaching peace of mind. The second is opening our soul in confession. The third is the need to develop one's own spiritual life. The fourth is the roots of cheerfulness. And the fifth is happiness is found in God alone. And the last Subtopic is joy is compatible with suffering and pain. So let's take up the first one, meeting sadness in our way. We easily become sad uh, when suffering, sickness, setbacks, especially when our own shortcomings confront us when things do not go the way we want it. The book of Proverbs says, sadness spoils a man's heart like a moth ruins clothes and a termite damages wood. And from the book of wisdom, and I quote, take heart and cheer up and throw away your distress because sadness has scared many people. Well, sadna, sadness is an ally of the enemy. And the enemy, this enemy of ours, uses it to bring us even deeper into misery and despair, stirring up memories, creating fantasies, desiring compensation, etc. We usually experience uh, sadness brings us to abandonment and places us farther away from God and others. It can even grow into a way of life. St. Thomas Aquinas said that sadness is a vice caused by the disordered love of oneself. It is not a special vice, but rather the general root of vices. But the heart and the root of this problem is sin. Behind an apparently inexplicable dissatisfaction. We find the root of malice, selfishness, and the desire of not giving anything and searching only for those things that satisfy us. When you perceive that, uh, what do we do then? Uh, how do we gain uh, peace of mind? Well, when you perceive that God is chastening you, fly not to his enemies, but to his friend, the martyrs, the saints, and those who are pleasing to him and who have great power in God. I'm quoting from St. Louis of Montfort. So we need to regain the supernatural sense of everything around us as soon as we start feeling sad and discouraged. One of the things that is going to help us recover this supernatural sense is spiritual direction. We need to talk about our problems with that person who can help us. For those married, we should not open their soul to the white. Is it, it is not their mission to help us in something that is between God and us, purely personal and a matter of conscience. How are we going to gain peace of mind? Unburdening our conscience, if you have, and I'm exaggerating, a crime burdening you from the past. How can you have peace 
even if the environment around you is idea. Talk about that thing that bothers you and be sincere. In the end, we will understand that sadness is caused by an obstacle, by an obstacle between God and us. This is why we also need to go to confession frequently. Confession brings peace by removing personal conflicts with God. And so, removing conflicts within ourselves. These are moral conflicts that we all have experienced and cannot ignore. Those who try to ignore it will only fall into a deeper level of sadness from what they cannot get rid of. There is a need to develop one's own spiritual life. Cheerfulness should be more than just peace of mind. After leaving our sins in the hands of God, we need understanding, knowledge, growth. We need to understand the ways of God to see his hand in everything. There is an explanation for everything in our Catholic faith. We just need to ask. John Paul the second says, cheerfulness and holiness are the inevitable result of getting closer to God. That's from his homil one of his homilies uh, in 1981. And St. Paul he explains, for those, he says, for those who love God, everything is for the best. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. Well, it is impossible to be genuinely cheerful if we do not get that understanding and supernatural outlook through prayer. We need to see the hands of God behind everything that happens to us and accept it. We will then experience cheerfulness, even in the middle of serious problems and contradictions. Why is it that uh, we are happier when we forget ourselves? There is a saying, there is more joy in giving than receiving. We have heard this many times and perhaps we have experienced the truth of it. Only when we forget of ourselves that we are truly happy and contented. The founder of Opus Dei, our dear Saint of Saint Maria, said, Most of our troubles spring from forgetting the service we owe others and being too concerned about our own ego. Dedication to the service of others through forgetting oneself is so effective that God rewards it with a humility breathing with cheerfulness. That's from the letter of Saint of Saint Maria sometime uh, in March of 1931. This forgetting about oneself, uh, this uh, cheerfulness, has a very important Christian projection. The apostolic, the apostolic sense that uh, the life of every Christian has. The cheerfulness of a man or a woman of God has to overflow. It has to be calm, contagious, attractive. In a few words, it has to be supernatural and natural. So infectious that it brings others to follow Christian ways. And we find this in the book of Saint Saint Maria the Pharaoh. So we ask ourselves, long faces, rough manners, ridiculous appearance, and friendly attitude. Is this how we hope to inspire others to follow Christ? So let's proceed. Finding a further understanding in the roots of 
the virtue of cheerfulness. That's another one of the subtopics we have. There is a human side of cheerfulness, but this virtue has deeper roots. Cheerfulness is not a different virtue to charity, but rather a certain up and effect of charity. St. Thomas tells us also, cheerfulness also flows from the other two theological virtues. First, Live cheerfully in your hope. And second, your optimism will be a necessary consequence of your faith. Again, the last one, the second one, is from the way of St. Maria, number 378. So to become cheerful, we need to live and grow in the three theological virtues. We need God's help because these virtues come from him and bring us to him, the source and foundation of all joy. Happiness is found in God alone. It is a fact of life that everyone looks for happiness. Everyone wants peace of mind. This is what makes us go on and on. Imagine a life without this desire. Everyone seems to be possessed by this desire. Catholics, Buddhists, atheists alike. And this desire to achieve it, bring everyone into frenzied search. We as Christians know more now. This is a desire placed by God in our soul that is satisfied only when we possess him. All other achievements fall short in our expectations. This we experience constant. This desire placed by God inside us pushes us to look for the ultimate good, the perfect good, complete and lasting, okay? So true cheerfulness relies beyond what we can see and touch. Quoting our Lord in scripture, Jesus, what I quote, Jesus answered and said to her, whoever drinks of this water shall thirst again. But he that shall drink of the water that I will give him shall not thirst forever. And the water that I will give him shall become in him a fountain of water springing up into life everlasting. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst nor come hither to draw. That's uh, from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 4, verse uh, 13 to 15. Okay, another one is, another subtopic is, joy is compatible with mortification and pain. Joy is essentially a Christian characteristic. But should we have the misfortune to encounter sorrow? undergo suffering, experience misunderstanding, or even to fall into sin, how quickly will our thoughts turn to the one who always loves us and who with his infinite love as God overcomes every trial, feels our emptiness, forgives all our sins, and eagerly impels us towards a new path that is safe and joyful. Uh, this was also quoted by uh, Pope John Paul II sometime in 1980. 
Anyway, the church wishes to remind us that joy is perfectly compatible with mortification and pain. It is, not, it is sadness and not penance which is opposed to happiness. I repeat, it is sadness and not penance which is opposed to happiness. Suffering and tribulation are inevitably and eventually the lot of everyone on this earth. But suffering of itself alone neither transforms nor purifies. It may even be the cause of rebellion and hatred. Some Christians abandon our Lord when they meet the cross because they seek a purely human happiness, free from pain and accompanied by material wealth. Well, God asks us to lose our fear of pain and tribulation and unite ourselves to him as he waits for us on the cross. Our souls will then be more purified a love stronger. And we will realize that joy is inseparable from the cross. Hmm? Joy is inseparable from the cross. Not only that, but as we will also understand that, that we can never be happy if we are not united to Christ on the cross. And that we will never know how to love if we do not at the same time love sacrifice. Within the mystery of co-redemption, our sufferings united to those of Christ acquire an incomparable value for the entire church and the whole of mankind. If we humbly have recourse to God, he will make us see that everything even events and circumstances apparently least likely to do so work together for the good of those who love him. Suffering, when seen in its true light, when it serves as a means of loving more, produces great peace and deep joy. That is why God often blesses us with a cross. That is why God often blesses us with a cross. That is how we must travel along the way of self-giving. A cross on our shoulders, a smile on our lips, and light in our hearts. Again, words of our founder, Saint of Saint Maria, on the way of the cross on the second station. And finally, God loves the cheerful giver. From the second letter to the Corinthians. We should not be surprised to find that it hurts to do mortification and penance. What matters is knowing how to set about undergoing and accepting them manfully in the secure knowledge that they please God who is watching us. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. So Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Saint Gabriel, Saint Paul, Holy Mary, our hope, seed of wisdom, pray for us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you, gentlemen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My Lord and my God, 
I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I beg your pardon for my sins and the grace to spend this time of prayer fruitfully. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. We have uh, meditated on our victory or the hope that we will be with the Lord uh, someday for eternity. And, uh, but we are still here. That resurrection for the Lord and stayed with the disciples for 40 days and eventually he has to say, Bye-bye. I have to report back. I have to go home. And so, uh, he ascended. You know, we have the ascension of our Lord and promising uh, in a short while to send the third person of the Blessed Trinity, the Holy Spirit. So, while uh, our own resurrection has not yet occurred, it will come in due time, waiting and uh, busy with our work. We could not uh, lose hope, just like uh, the disciples. They were told, they knew, but uh, it has not happened yet. And therefore, they were moving out of uh, Jerusalem. And here we have the story of the two disciples of Emmaus taken from St. Luke. It says here, two of them were going that very day to a village named Emmaus, which is 60 stadia from Jerusalem. And they were talking to each other about all these things that had happened. And it came to pass while they were conversing and arguing together that Jesus himself also drew near and went along with them. But their eyes were held that they should not recognize him. And he said to them, What words are these that you are exchanging as you walk and are sad? But one of them named Cleophas answered and said to him, are, the, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in work and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be sentenced to death and crucified him. But we were hoping that it was he who should redeem Israel. Yet, yes, and besides all this, today is the third day since these things came to pass. And moreover, certain women of our company who were at the tomb before it was light astounded us and not finding his body, they came, saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said that he is alive. So some of our company went to the tomb and found it even as the women had said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, O foolish ones and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things before entering into his glory? And the beginning then with Moses and with all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things referring to himself. And they drew near to the village to which they were going, and he acted as though he were going on. And they urged him, saying, Stay with us, 
for it is getting towards evening, and the day is now far spent. And he went in with them, and it came to pass when he reclined at table with them, that he took bread and blessed and broke and began handing it to them, and their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. And they said to each other, Was not our heart burning within us while he was speaking on the road and explaining to us the scriptures? Very familiar story of uh, these two disciples as if disappointed because uh, they uh, were uh, not, they have not seen our Lord and uh, moving away. And they did not recognize Christ accompanying them along the way until he broke the bread and gave to them. And then they remember, oh, this is Christ. Well, it would like uh, to show in our second meditation for this recollection how we already know very well know the scriptures uh, or the gospel that we have heard uh, every Sunday or every day. Maybe we have our own uh, New Testament and we read uh, constantly, you know, daily, and uh, we have uh, taken our Catholic doctrine. And yet, because we are not there yet, or we knew it's the truth. But while we are busy with our things at the moment, I am busy with my pastoral work, you are busy where you are, and the mothers, the fathers, everyone is busy. And we could not recognize that, oh Lord, even if uh, he has gone away, he has gone up to heaven, he had uh, come down through the Holy Spirit. And so the Holy Trinity is in us. In fact, He is here with us in the tabernacle. We reserve Him here. Every Mass uh, that uh, would uh, be celebrated by any priest in any parts of the world, our Lord will come down and make it the food that uh, he has given in the Last Supper and even commanded the disciples to say, do this in memory of me. Do it again and again, and which I am doing and which all the priests would be doing once they ha have been ordained. So that our Lord comes down and gives us the food, uh, the body and the blood of our Lord for our uh, eternal life and the rest he would want to stay in the tabernacle. Since then, up to now, in this and in many tabernacles, our Lord is there. And He is in my heart and in your heart if we welcome Him. Could it be possible that we would be neglectful, that we would not remember? <laughs> or that we would not recognize him, just like these two disciples. They were already together talking, and yet they did not seem to recognize his voice, or they, maybe they did not look, who is this? He has a different face already, Jesus. But that's uh, what we want to examine in this second uh, meditation, you know, in uh, our examination of conscience, and just uh, checking if very, very true that we know a lot, uh, that we know he's here, that he said uh, all this uh, truth uh, to the Catholic Church. He even has put up, uh, established and founded the only one and only Catholic Church with the uh, 
Peter as the head. And then he said, go and bring uh, the good news to the whole world and baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Meaning from here, then you go. Because uh, it started from Israel, from Jerusalem, and it has to spread. Many conversion uh, at the time, and then the disciples went far, and here we are. Almost uh, 2,000 years had passed since our Lord came. And do we still uh, have that expectation that He did resurrect it, and we will resurrect someday? Not yet. And that's why while we are in here, we have to listen. What to do? No, and uh, he tells us with those commandments, love God above all things with all your heart, uh, with all your body, with all your soul, uh, with all the effort that we can do, and then love our neighbor as we love ourselves, following the commandments so that we don't get lost. And while uh, busy with our everyday activities, and we have mentioned in the first meditation that if we listen, uh, if we have learned from St. Rosa Maria, our patron, our founder in Opus Dei, to take advantage of those hours of work of uh, each day, sanctifying them all the time, and in order to be able to make them holy, we have to recognize the voice, the presence of the Lord. That He is, God is everywhere, God is here, not only in the tabernacle, but God is in my heart, is everywhere. We can talk to Him anytime, anywhere we go. But we feel as his presence is as well, he is far away. I have not seen him, of course. Face to face, not yet. <laughs> we just have the eyes of faith. Lord, you are here. We, uh, we see you, we, we believe in you. But for now, that's all. We are longing, we are someday, that will be someday, uh, coming, coming soon. But for the meantime, what will help us is to uh, keep him present. And before doing anything, we uh, be making sure that he is watching, he is looking at us if we are doing the right thing. And if he is present and we are doing something not really very pleasing, not very good, or even sinful, then make sure to, to immediately reject, to immediately say, no, 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 Lord, this is a temptation. Huh? The, the devil is uh, presenting to me these things, and which I should not be doing. I have uh, more important things to do. Huh? And so you have to choose now. Nah? The, the devil coming in to tempt, and we have also uh, things that we have to do. If we hear his voice, if we feel his presence, if we know that he is watching and we want to sanctify our way so that it be pleasing to God, then we put aside all this temptation. For sure, we remove, even if it's so, so tempting. So, no. That helps a lot. And we want our Lord to be, to be accompanying us. Sometimes we bless the house, bless the office, bless the motorcycle, a new car. Uh, we bless, 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 blessing of the new building. Very good. The blessing means is allowing our Lord to come, to stay, even stay with us. And like this disciple, this disciple, he pretend to be living. I said, no, no, it's dark already. Stay. He stayed. He wants to stay in each one of us. So make sure to have that uh, presence of mind, presence of God, that Lord stay with us. 
wherever I go, whatever I do. No, and uh, since you come down uh, on the altar in my parish or in the mass, then that's the only way I can uh, meet you physically and would want that I want uh, to eat the, the, your body and blood which you have given uh, in that Last Supper. And where can we get it? Only when we attend Mass, when we go to the church. And uh, now we long for, if for so long a time we have been spared uh, because of the pandemic excuse uh, to attend uh, Sunday Masses or even everyday Masses, by now, after two years, then we say, Lord, I miss you. Spiritually, well, we hope we did not lose you at home. Work at home, stay at home. No, but uh, we continue to have your presence because we carry on our norms of piety, our prayer, our rosary, our angelus, our uh, you know, spiritual reading, you know, uh, New Testament reading. So we have it, you at home. But as far as attending to that sacrifice at the uh, Mass, uh, that will, is the reenactment of the, the Calvary, then for some time now, maybe at the moment, more and more are going up. Maybe not all. Well, encourage everybody. Now, no, we have been vaccinated and we are protected and with all the protocols that we observe, even social distancing in the parishes, we would want to be present physically, not online, not watching. Because, well, what is the value of that? Just watching, viewing, nothing, nothing more. But we want to be present at Calvary and bloody, in the, on the altar and you will come down during the consecration then we long for to be able to receive you physically inside us not only weekly if we already attend our sunday obligation but every day for those who have been accustomed to say i will attend mass i will always be uh, the best preparation we talk about preparation for that resurrection for that victory for that hope not only to pass on the board but really to pass heaven and get very high and be able to bring not only me but my family and many of my friends in the offices i i i, I tell them i i i, I would show them this, all of these things that I learned so that it will be a joy for eternity, for everybody. We would not want to lose any soul. That's our goal. We don't want to lose any soul. Even our Lord had said, I came to save all. I died to save all. But with freedom, not as a slave. But children of God wanting uh, to imitate uh, his father. And that's what we are. And uh, we have all the means. Because our Lord, before leaving, he has left us the church. He has left us the sacrament. He has leave, left us uh, the, the Paschal mystery that we celebrate on this coming Good Friday. That repeatedly all the time on the altar. And aside, aside from that, all the different liturgical ceremonies of baptism, of confirmation, no, of uh, getting a family, therefore the matrimony, getting uh, to become a priest, and the holy orders for the ordination. And very frequently, our Lord is here patiently waiting for you for all of us, patiently. 
very understanding. When uh, we say, oh, I sinned again. I have uh, failed again. I was tempted again and again. And what? What do we do? We move. We be like the prodigal son. I have offended my father. I want to go back to him. Where? Well, that sacrament of penance is what he has given to Peter. Go to, to the church, to the priest. Who's ever seen you forgive, they are forgiven. If not, then I will not. So all the power has been given uh, to the priest. And so we have to go there because there is the sacramental grace. There is the absolution. There is the forgiveness of our Lord. Uh, very patiently, uh, as many times, not once, not twice, not seven times, but 70 times seven, our Lord is very willing to take us back. Like the prodigal son running, he was also coming for him. He was not just waiting and saying, well, you, you're, you're really bad. No, like a father, he was the one waiting. Until now, our Lord is waiting for all of us to return, to make sure that we are clear of any offenses. And if we can make reparation during this Lenten season, like praying and doing mortification and helping one another through the charitable works, then that's the best to be joining Him on the Holy, Holy, Holy Week, especially on Good Friday. Well, we are all uh, welcome to be with the Lord uh, all the time while we are traveling because we know we are in a pilgrimage we are on our way and we have a target and it takes really very short a few years no we mention again a uh, few years means uh, as long as uh, 100 or any any uh, length of time uh, by our counting is really short compared to that uh, promise of eternity, of being with Him forever and forever. So when we are doing foolishness or we start forgetting or uh, being discouraged or disappointed or uh, giving up, I say, you know, well, I, uh, uh, I'm lazy or, you know, I like to enjoy, oh, whatever. Don't forget that it's not only winning a medal, not only winning, you know, a championship, but rather is to be with the Lord in heaven forever and ever. So let's uh, finish our uh, prayer asking the Lord to uh, stay with us and uh, to accompany us of course if you ask for that of course, well i am always ready it's you trying to uh, leave me behind or kicking me out you know when we commit sin of course especially mortal sin that's it he has to leave he said, i cannot because you allow the devil to come in it's a mortal sin which i said no it cannot be we can com cannot be compatible to be the devil coming in and our Lord continue to stay with us. It's either him with us in the state of grace or if we allow temptation to tempt us and we commit that mortal sin, our Lord will just get out and wait for the moment to say, Lord, please forgive me. I offended you again and again. And hopefully the very last time, making sure that we are ready to face Him. And uh, better still, not that particular judgment. No, you pass or you don't pass. No, no more, no need. What we want while we are here is that He is our friend. 
we, he accompanies us and we are always close to him day in and day out while busy working, while busy enjoying the family, while uh, being with friends. Jesus is with us. So familiar because every day we talk to Jesus, we do our prayer, we attend Mass. That at the end, when we will close our eyes, it will be just Jesus, a friend, not a judge. No, there will be judgment. No more. You will not judge a friend. I am a friend all the time. Or make uh, us as much effort. And therefore, he will just say, come in, my friend. I knew you so long a time and we have been talking, we have been uh, walking all the while, you know, your years on earth. And now that it has, uh, you have arrived to the finish line, you have won the fight, the battle. Just like uh, St. Paul, you know, towards the end of his, his life, he was, just men he was also mentioning that, that one. No, his last battle, I have won the fight, I have run the race, I have arrived uh, to that uh, destiny that, is, uh, has, that has been promised. We want to join you, Jesus. We want to join our uh, Mother Mary, St. Joseph, and all the saints in heaven, especially St. Uh, Jose Maria, who had uh, helped us very much. Uh, in our uh, trouble, the sanctification of uh, ordinary life and work that he has taught us. We have tried to live that, always accompanied by Mary. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, inspirations that you have communicated to me in this meditation. I beg your help in performing them. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.